I am Jasmine Townsend, the creator of the Facebook page, Black Girls Belong in Fantasy and Sci-Fi. Welcome to another episode of Lirabelle Goes to Tea. I'm sorry for the late video, or, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, technically it's a video, but I'm sorry for the late podcast episode. I've been extremely busy, and now that the semester has started, I am teaching two classes on Mondays. And I'm on campus for like nine hours. So um, I will no longer be able to upload on Mondays. So I've decided to switch it to Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, and see how that works out. Um, and I wrote this in between classes when I sort of had time. So I wrote this in my notebook. So if you hear page pages turning while I'm reading, that's why. Um... But this episode is the Halloween Spectacular. It won the vote. Um, and this will be Halloween Spectacular Part 1. So, without further ado, let's jump into the story. Ah, what a beautiful day for tea. Lirabelle, Giselle, and Risa had decided to meet one beautiful Saturday morning for tea and scones. It was a crisp September day with a clear sky and the warmth that lingers a little at the end of summer. And because it was such a nice day, the tea room was packed, so the girls were stuck waiting on the bench near the cash register. Ah, damn, I guess I should have called ahead, Giselle said. Well... Lisa said, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm sure a table will be done soon. Mirabel turned around to check out the information board behind them. And her gaze landed upon business cards of artists and small business owners in the area. An ad for private guitar lessons, a flyer for new apartments built near campus, and, oh, a talent show called The Halloween Spectacular. Third place would win $500. Second place would win $1,000. First place would win $1,500. And a workshop with an artist of the winner's choice. Lirabelle squealed and tapped Giselle on the shoulder. Giselle, look! We could throw something together! Oh my god, Giselle gushed. Did you see who's doing the workshops? Duh, Lirabelle said. The Halloween Spectacular had an astoundingly impressive lineup of potential instructor instructors for the workshops. Lirabo would cry tears of joy if she could have an in-person lesson with Hilary Hahn. And Giselle was undoubtedly freaking out over the possibility of learning from Misty Copeland herself. Risa searched the flyer. Well, they'd better have the best of the best with a $150 entry fee per person. Risa, you want to maybe do something with us? Lirabelle asked. Oh no, 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 no. I, I have the worst stage fright. There's a reason I'm in fine arts, not performing arts, she said. But I can help with painting scenery and stuff like, like that if you want a backdrop. Perfect, Lirabel said. Ah, uh, girls, the hostess appeared just then. Your table's ready. Three little pots of tea sat on the table. Thé de Marie Antoinette for Lirabel, Himalayan ginger and lemongrass for Giselle, and iron goddess of mercy for Risa. In the middle sat a platter of scones and dollops of jam and Devonshire cream. So we have to do something entertaining and impressive enough, Lirabelle said, but nothing too hard. Linda, her private instructor, had been pushing Lirabelle to her limit with Accolade's violin concerto in A minor. she needed to practice for school meant she couldn't possibly take on another challenging piece. 
Lisa tapped her chin in thought. Something a little lighter, but can still wow the judges? Oh, how about Dad's Macabre? Giselle said. Ah, that would be so much fun, Lairville said after breathing a sigh of relief. Dante Macabre by Camille Saint Saint is a well loved piece, perfect for Halloween, beautiful, lively, easy but not boring. Giselle continued. Okay, so you'll obviously play the solo and I'll be the dancing dead. It'll be great. But we'll need a pianist, Lirabelle said. Oh, that'll be easy, Giselle, or uh, Larissa said. You can ask around the school. Splitting the prize money wouldn't be a big deal. Their parents, like most of the parents at the academy, made enough money that $1,500 wasn't a huge deal. Split three ways between violinist, dancer, and pianist, that would make $500 each. That's dress money. It would be nice to be able to purchase a new dress without having to ask her parents. So, yes, the money wasn't the goal. Lirville's eyes were on the prize, and the prize was a workshop with Hilary Hahn. Giselle said, did you see who is listed for the pianist workshop? I think whoever we try to recruit would find it very tempting once we mention they have a shot at learning from Mitsuko Uchida, Lirabelle said. The following Monday, the girls were exhausted by lunchtime. Apparently everyone else had also learned about the Halloween spectacular, a fact that, in hindsight, Lirabelle should have expected. Everyone was planning their own thing, forming their own groups, or going solo. The girls met at their usual table with their lunch trays. Oh, there's no one left to ask, Lirabelle said. Well, that's disheartening, Giselle said, because you know more pianists than I do. And I know even fewer, Lisa said. Just then, creepy Tyler approached their table. Hey, I heard you need a pianist. Oh my God, were you eavesdropping? Giselle said with visible disgust on her face. No, he said, you've only been asking the entire school. He glanced at Lisa and flashed a smile. You performing too? Oh, um, no, it's not really my thing. Oh, what a shame. I would have loved to be your pianist. Well, we don't need a pianist that badly, Giselle said. Fine, Creepy Tyler said. I already had a piece I wanted to do anyway, and... I was going to be nice and ask my older brother if he could help you guys out, but, uh... You have an older brother? Lirabelle said. Who plays piano? Giselle said. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Lirabelle said. Several questions. First, how do you have a brother who plays piano and I don't know him? Is he any good? Does he go here? And second, why are you so willing to help us out? Creepy Tyler cleared his throat obnoxiously <coughs> and took the empty seat next to Lirabelle. He had packed his mother's tuna casserole for lunch and Lirabelle could not stand the smell. To answer your questions in order, he doesn't go here. He actually goes to start a tech, but I promise he's good. I can show you a video of him playing and everything. And, Giselle said, why are you so willing to help us out? Well, I'm not going to help for nothing, Tyler said. Lirabel sighed and then immediately regretted it when she remembered she was sitting right next to the tuna casserole. What do you want, Tyler? I want to sit with you guys during lunch. Giselle choked on her salad. What? 
or maybe a date with Risa? Risa stiffened and her face turned beet red. I, uh, I, um, no thank you. All you want to do is sit with us? Lirabelle said. Well, before we make any decisions, Giselle said, let us see him play first, then we can negotiate, but absolutely no dates. All right, all right, fair enough. Tyler put out his phone and started a video of what looked like a teen boy at a piano as a, at a gathering of some sort. The pianist began to play Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Lirabelle smiled despite herself. Tyler must have seen her because he said, Yeah, he's good, isn't he? Lirabelle bit her lip. Not only had Tyler presented them with a pianist, but a damn good one at that. He was fantastic. And, well, kind of handsome. But mostly fantastic. That's your brother, Giselle said. I could talk to him if you wanted me to. The girls all exchanged glances. Lisa and Giselle were also as conflicted as she was. But... It was such a strange request. Lirabelle turned to him and asked, Well, where do you usually sit? Um, upstairs with Mr. Davies. He, uh, lets me eat in his classroom. Oh, Lirabelle said. Come to think of it, Tyler did often disappear around lunchtime. He'd come to the cafeteria to buy a drink and a snack to go with his lunch, and then he'd disappear. Lirabelle looked at Giselle and Lisa. Both their faces softened a little. Two conditions, Lirabelle said. One, no more hitting on Lisa. It makes her uncomfortable. And two, please, no more tuna, I'm sorry. But the, the smell is putting me off my lunch. Wait, really? Tyler said. If the other two agree. Risa nodded. Giselle frowned, but she nodded as well. Okay, deal. Okay, Lirabelle said. So, you'll talk to your brother for us? Tyler seemed as excited as they were. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's really good, Lirabelle said. How come he doesn't go here? Why is he at Starter Tech? Well, he wants to be an engineer, like our mom. But he just loves piano. He just, he's just naturally good at it. Lirabelle detected a hint of sadness in his voice. She wondered if his family ever compared the two. Because if that were the case, she understood a little bit what that was like. The situation was a little different between her and her older sister, Arietta. And so she wanted to ask him, but it seemed too personal and she didn't want to pry. Instead, she smiled and said, ah, uh, you just have to work hard like everyone else including your brother. It doesn't matter how gifted you are, you don't get to be that good. You don't get to that level without countless hours of practice. Trust me. And that's the end of the episode. What did you think? Usually right about now, there would be a, a poll and I would tell you to go vote on Twitter. But since I could not fit the entire story into one episode, I'm going to continue it with the Halloween Spectacular Part 2. Therefore, no voting this time around. But stay tuned. It's a common, a common feature of this series. Uh, and in the future, 
when you do go to vote. It will be up on my Twitter page for future episodes at BGBFS and it is always open for one week so be sure to go over there and vote. Well, when there's a chance to vote. If you are a patron on my Patreon, your votes are weighted more. If you would like to become a patron, you can find me at patreon.com slash jasmine shea, all one word, J-A-S-M-I-N-E-S-H-E-A, patreon.com slash jasmine shea. And you'll also be privy to exclusive sneak peeks, such as early artwork for the Magical Girl novel. Speaking of, as usual, I do want to give a huge thanks to my bestie, Miss Candy Hearts, formerly known as Candy Fay, for the gorgeous artwork she did for this podcast. The music used is by Eric Matias from soundimage.org. Well, except for the the, the classical music, obviously. But <laughs> thank you for listening. I super hoped you enjoyed it. And I hope you will join me next time. Super Ninja shout out to LCT Comics and Cassie and Holly. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.